Welcome to episode one of the November Thanks and Giving series, Tortellini Tastes from Afar. We are serving you up with some delicious experiences this month, and this one comes in the form of virtual reality. You and your students just need a tablet or computer, and you are equipped to take a delicious adventure. Remember to listen closely as you watch for the prize code word. In this experience, we will explore Google Tour Creator, learn how to locate and implement virtual tours, and find out how to create your own free and easy virtual tours. Let's get started. Okay, open Chrome in your browser and search for Google Tour Creator. It's going to be the first link that pops up. So click on that. And then you'll be at the home page where it says create a virtual tour. Click get started. This will load in any of your Gmail accounts. So choose the appropriate Gmail account you want to use and enter your password. It does not need to be a school specific Gmail account for you to create these. So once you log in, you'll see that it's pretty much a blank slate for you to get started. You can go to make a brand new tour on your own or click templates and search the pre-made templates and that's what we're going to do first. You can scroll through and look for any kind of engaging content and for time purposes I'm going to choose the solar system. And so it's going to copy that template for me as a teacher to look at and review and as you can see I can click in and type and edit this content. I'm not viewing this um, live and published. We're going to do that after re we review the content and make sure it entails all the pages, all the necessary content that you're teaching. So I'm going to go through and look at each tour, virtual tour page and make sure that the content is relevant to what I'm teaching. So as you can see, this is just on a regular laptop. I'm taking two fingers and scrolling around and looking at this virtual interactive solar system environment that my students will get to see. Already done for me, preloaded with informational spots. That's what these little eyes are with content embedded and already typed in. So if I click on one of those, it's going to take me to where that content is typed in and I can read that and determine if that content is um, teaching my objectives or I could type in there and edit it a little bit, add, take some um, content out and make sure that it's teaching exactly what I want my students to know as they're exploring you know, this um, virtual solar system environment. So I'm just double checking each one of those and if I wanna keep it um, exactly what it says, I don't need to do much of anything. Um, except for to just check it out um, and then I can navigate to um, each other individual page and experience it first before my students do again scrolling around checking that content you know making sure the information is all there that I want my students to um, know and retain during this experience and then once I do that, I would like to make sure I go through to um, all pages. Um, this is loading just a little bit slow for me. Here we go. There's the next page. And we've got information here on the formation of the solar system, making sure that this is uh, teaching the content that I want. Again, um, more additional information on the next page of the solar system formation, part two. I'm giving more details, more informational spots. I can also add informational spots, but I'll show you that later when we create our own tour. And then this is the final and last page um, of, again, all the planets, a little bit more information, last tidbits that I want them to see. So when I am ready, I like this, I'm going to publish it. Now I can choose whether I want this to be um, public or unlisted. My students will be able to see it either way, but I'm gonna make it public for now. I'm gonna click publish. And then once that tour is published and it's public, I can copy this link and I can paste it into my LMS, or I can just view it first to make sure everything looks good. 
I'm viewing as a student would see. I still have edit permissions because I'm logged in as the owner of this. Um, that's why you see the edit button down below. Your students won't have those edit permissions once you share that link out. But you can see it loads up the very first page. Um, it'll kind of float through, but you can take that and you can grab it and drag it around as well and look at it as if the students would um, be seeing it. You can see the hot spots are all there, the informational spots, and this is how it would pop up for your students also. They click on those, information pops right in for them um, to read and review. Next, just X out of that view screen and you're back at where you created your tour. Click Done. And then you can go back and your saved published tour will be here on your page. And you can look up more templates and we are going to do just that. We're going to look for another template to add that has some different features that this one didn't have. Let's go ahead to do the Great Wall of China. This is an excellent example of what we're looking for. So again, this is pre-made. You would go through each page, but for time purposes, let's just go to the first page and this is the feature I want you to see. The narration feature, which is a voiceover of this scene. You can see there's a play button. The long fortress. The walls stretch out before you, rolling down into valleys, climbing steeply up mountains, like the spine of a sleeping dragon. And your students will have access to that sound as well. So these um, informational spots, Something you come to realize as you survey the wall and the surrounding countryside is that the wall is not continuous. Rather, it is a network of sections. You are A lot of them have uh, voiceovers for your students who might have trouble reading or just for engagement purposes. So if you click on one of those informational spots, you'll see there's a picture and a person with like a voice sound kind of symbol to it. So that's where you're going to add informational um, narration. You can't narrate right within Tour Creator, but you can record yourself and um, as an MP3 and then select that audio file and drop it in. But we're going to do that in our next section of this tutorial um, for time purposes again. And so let's go out back into our templates and then we'll go right back into our um, landing page again and this is where we're going to now begin to learn how to create our very own blank slate tour. Begin by clicking new tour and you'll see that we have a very uh, blank canvas here so we're going to title the entire tour. I'm going to do one on the Grand Canyon and then put in an overview um, description of uh, what the entire tour will entail. You could be as detailed or um, put as little information in here as you want, but just something general to cover that. And then you can select a category for your tour, so maybe by subject. I'm going to select places and scenes. And then you can add a cover photo if this is necessary. Um, so select an image. I've already done that. I've saved one to my desktop on the Grand Canyon and click open and that will be the cover of your tour. Now you are ready to create the scenes in your tour. This will bring up a map that um, you can search for already preloaded 360 videos for any place or location. So I'm typing in the Grand Canyon and I see the first listing here. I can view this 360 preloaded photo to see if this is something that meets my criteria for what I'd like my students to see. So once I'm done viewing that and I deem it appropriate for my lesson, I can click add scene and this will add it to my virtual tour. Again, I'm going to name this specific scene. So based on what that image is about, uh, talking about hiking in the Grand Canyon, um, give this scene a description, an overview description, maybe not so much um, informational content, but again, you can write um, up to the limit of characters. And then this is where I want to add my informational points, my points of interest, so I can move those to the locations that fit what I want to explain 
to my students and again uh, list a title for those points and this is where you really want to get um, your content in there you know what is it that you want your students to learn about um, in each different point of interest as you saw in the solar system I'm going to just type in something here quickly um, in general so that you can get the idea and again down below is where you could add a picture or a voiceover but I'm just adding content for um, this purpose and I would like to add another point of interest um, as well so I just click the plus and again grab that eye point of interest and place it where you want it to be for your students to click on give that point of interest a title and um, you know just an overview title and then again some more descriptive information um, so when they click it and get up close to that spot or look into that location they have your content um, already in there and again these pictures are free um, that I'm pulling out from Tor Creator that have already been preloaded you know the 360 photos um, that are in there so this scene is done for me I I don't want to add any more to this scene I'm good with it um, I like the way that the information is in there I'm going to just set what I want my students to see when they enter this scene so that's what I'm doing now I'm going to save that as the entry photo when they log in now let's make a new scene um, I'm going to search for the Grand Canyon again and see what else I can find it doesn't look like there's much else in here I don't want the hotel that doesn't meet my content needs and I believe yes this is the same photo that so I'm going to cancel that and let me add a scene let me use a different search term this time instead of the Grand Canyon I'm going to take that out and use a different search term let's use just Grand Canyon okay here we go Grand Canyon National Park this might be a good way to search excellent this picture is more like it this is looking maybe from the top view I'm going to scroll around and see if it has the information or the scene that I'd like I'm gonna click add scene because this suits my needs and again I'm going to title this scene you can see down below I already have a scene titled hiking the canyon and this one I'm going to call view from the rim um, a little description overview of what this scene is about again a view from the Grand Canyon rim now I'm going to again click the plus add my point of interest and give them some information about that spot so this is the walking path and go ahead and add some content here and so the viewers from around the world come to see the sights okay so there we go and this will be a good overview of what that path is about okay moving on I really want to see if there's anything else that okay this looks good here all right now add another point of interest with clicking the plus is what I'm going to do next because I know that I want to start diving deep into my content and here I can do that um, I would, would like to point out that the Colorado River runs through um, the base of the Grand Canyon and once I get this descriptor in here you're going to go through adding a picture of the Colorado River so I can select an image but if I don't have one yet I'm just gonna go ahead and search one so let's search for the Colorado River um, in the Grand Canyon and making sure that I am searching for images that are free for me to use so I'm going to toggle on the tools and click my usage rights Creative Commons licenses make sure you're doing this 
and I'm going to pick a picture that um, is listed there that looks like a good um, image to showcase. I'm just going to save this image to my computer so that I can grab it and pull it in my tour. So select an image, find that Colorado River, open it up, and I'm going to click add. So now this point of interest is now a picture. So when the students click on that eye, they are going to see the picture I placed in. You can see there's a little picture symbol of the Colorado River. So it gives them like a detailed dive in up close and personal view um, a little bit more when you add a picture to kind of zoom in. Now this add audio here, add ambient audio, this is going to be to layer a sound over the entire scene. So when the students walk into this scene, it's going to have maybe some background sound. But what I want to do is add sound over my Colorado River. So I'm going to click that add narration button with the person. And then I'm going to select an audio file from my computer, which I've already pre-downloaded the sound of a flowing river. So I'm going to click open and add. Let's test that out. Sounds good. I'm going to click add and then I'm going to test it in my scene itself. And as you can see, the students will hear that when they click on the picture, they will be able to open that sound and hear the sound of the Colorado River. So now I'm ready to publish. Again, I'm going to leave that public. Click publish. And I'm going to be able to take that link and paste it in my LMS. Um, and I can view the tour again as a student. So once that tour loads, I can navigate it and check out the points of interest and information just like the students would be able to when they are live in your tour. And go to the next scene, look at that as well. Test out to make sure all of my points of interest are working and be sure to see each piece of information. And in the Colorado River. now. I don't hear the sound playing, and this is why. Turn on the narration. And now you can hear the Colorado River, which on your end probably sounds a lot like white noise, but that feature is in the gear to turn on and off narration, and each student has that ability. So let's go out of this and click done. We've already published our tour and we'll go back into our homepage where we have our two published tours and our draft of the Great Wall of China. Your code word for this session is tortellini spelled with T-O-U-R. So now that you've taken a look at how to search and implement pre-created tours, and make your own tours from scratch. Here are some extra tasty tips and tricks. Why not use Google Tour Creator as a way to grab your students' attention and introduce a new unit? Or, instructionally, use only a one scene page tour to teach specific content of the day, and take it a step further and redefine your students' learning experiences. Have them create their own tours as a culminating project. Using Google Tour Creator is an exciting, engaging, and educational way to immerse your students in the content you're teaching, even at a distance. Don't forget when you're done watching to fill out the prize form for entry. Fill out the form in the informational section of this video by Thursday, 11-12 at 7 p.m. and winners will be drawn at random and announced via our Twitter and Facebook. Thank you from GEG West Virginia. Don't forget to connect with us on Twitter and Facebook. Stay tuned for Episode 2 next Monday, 11-16.